we are going to try maximum likelihood for the Gaussian mixture model, which is called as GMMs sometimes, max Gaussian mixture model. Um, now, the likelihood function L is a function of a lot of things, right? So, it is a function of mu 1 to mu k, which we do not know, sigma 1 squared to sigma k squared, which we do not know, and pi 1 to pi k, which we do not know, and of course, the data x1 to xn, which we have observed. It is it's a function of all these things. Of course, we are going to treat it as a function of the parameters. Uh, the data is will act as a constant in this function and then we will maximize only with respect to the parameters like how we have always been doing. Nevertheless, let us put this term. Um, now, the IID assumption still hold, right. So, every data point is generated according to the same two steps. The second data point, again you go through the same two steps, which means that knowing the outcome of the first data point is not going to affect the probabilities of the second data points taking a certain value. Independence still holds. And then it is the same process that generates each of the data points, so identically distributed also holds. But then the distribution is going to be slightly different. Now, what is that distribution? Well, because of independence, the first thing is we can write this as a, a product of i equals 1 to n. Now, I am writing this, as a, this pi as a big pi. It is not the pi which is the parameter. So, it is just a product as usual. Now, there is some mixture distributions density um, which is determined by uh, where we have to see what is the density of observing xi uh, when you have parameters mu 1 to mu k, sigma 1 squared to sigma k squared and uh, pi 1 to pi k, small pi 1 to small pi k. Well, what is this mixture density? <coughs> now, because we have these two steps, what is the density of a point x i is determined by which mixture it comes from. Now, which mixture it comes from is determined by the role of the die, which is determined by our probability vector pi. Right. So, I can write this density function itself as um, product of i equals 1 to n. Now, sum over k equals 1 to capital K small pi k into the density of x i parameterized by mu k z k square what is happening here? What I am saying is, well, what is the density of x i coming from this mixture distribution? <clears throat> now, we are saying we do not know which, um, what was the coin, uh, so what was the phase on which the die ended up in when this step 1 was performed, because that is a latent variable, right. So, we do not get to see that. But then we are assuming that there is some probability pi k that it would have come from cluster 1, the same point x i. There is some probability pi 1 from cluster 1, pi 2 from cluster 2 and so on. It could have come from any cluster, right. So, we do not know that a priori. So, we have to use the fact that, well, it could have come from any cluster. So, I am weighing the chance that it is coming from a cluster by the probability that it comes from that cluster, right. So, it, but we also know that if it comes from cluster 1, it cannot come from cluster 2. Right. So, these are mutually exclusive events. Coming from cluster 1 is com completely exclusive of coming from cluster 2. So, the chance of seeing this data point is a sum of these mutually exclusive events of coming from cluster 1, coming from cluster 2 and coming from cluster k. So, I can add these events chances up. But then what is the chance that it comes from cluster 1? Well, if it has to come from cluster 1, two things should have happened. The first thing is that, well, the, the die should have fallen on phase 1, which means the probability of that happening is pi 1. And this point should have been generated according to Gaussian with mean pi one, mu 1 and sigma variance sigma squared 1, right. So, now that is a product, these two things have to happen together that the point was chosen from cluster k and mixture k and then, well, mixture k itself gives this point, which is this density. So, now what density is this? Now, this is just a Gaussian density, right. So, this is a normal density or Gaussian density because that is our assumption that is a Gaussian mixture model which we know how it looks like, right. 
So, just to give uh, give some uh, intuition here, right. So, let us say the true density looked like this. This is the true density, which means that there is some mean, um, uh, let me put some numbers, uh, maybe minus 20, um, maybe mean of the second Gaussian was 0, maybe the mean of the third Gaussian was 15, right. Um, let us say I saw x1 as minus 15, which is a point here. Now, this does not mean that immediately that x1 uh, necessarily came from cluster 1, it, not necessary, right. Um, we followed two steps. Well, what could have happened is, of course, it, cluster 1 could have been chosen and then this point came from cluster 1 according to this density value. Now, it could have very well been the case that cluster 2 was chosen when I rolled the dice. Um, now, in that case, the density of this would be from the second Gaussian, which would be smaller value, right. So, because it is closer more to cluster 1's mean, of course, the density that of that cluster 2 explains this point is smaller. It could have come from cluster 3 also, where the density is even smaller, right. So, it is super small, but then it is not 0. Gaussian will not give you 0 values for any point, right. So, it, it could have come from any of these, right. So, we cannot immediately dismiss the others. It could have come from any of these. In fact, it is not just the closeness to the means that determines this, right. It is also the pi's that determine this, right. So, it could be that pi 1. Uh, pi 3 was 0 0.9, pi 1 was just 0 0.05 and pi 2 was just 0 0.05. In which case that though minus 15 is very close to minus 20, the chance that the first cluster was picked itself is only 5 percent. Whereas, the chance that the third cluster was picked is much higher, right. So, in which case it is not just how much density that the Gaussian has for this point. Uh, which depends on how close you are to the mean that determines the density of seeing this point, uh, but it is also the chance that such a cluster was picked. All these are unknown variables at this point, right. So, we have to factor in all these and that is exactly what uh, uh, these equations here do. Let us go ahead now and then see what is the density and how we can do maximum likelihood here, right. So, so now uh, I am going to write the likelihood function. Um, I am going to treat, I mean there are so many parameters, I, I am not going to keep writing all the parameters every time. Let me just call um, it as theta. So, this is all parameters, right. So, mu, sigmas um, and our pi's, right. So, all put together, I am just calling it as uh, likelihood uh, as, as the parameters, okay. So, this is product of i equals 1 to n because of independence and now the ith point was generated according to k equals 1 to k pi k into the Gaussian density that the kth cluster generates this, which we know is e power um, 1 uh, minus x i minus mu k squared by 2 sigma k squared by square root of 2 pi sigma k, right. So, this is the actual mixture, the likelihood function, which we are trying to maximize. Well, it is a likelihood function. There is nothing stopping us from writing down a complicated likelihood function. That is that's the whole reason of uh, going to likelihood functions because if it was always simple as sample mean and uh, fraction of heads, I mean why, why develop a theory, right. So, we are doing this because we want to solve complicated problems and we better be able to handle such complicated problems, okay. So, so this is the likelihood function. Of course, uh, this is a product of a bunch of things. It is easy to typically handle uh, sums than products. So, our usual method would say that look at the log of the likelihood of theta um, and how that looks like. Let us let us see that. Uh, now, that is going to be sum over i equals 1 to n. This product here becomes sum. Um, you have a log. Now, here is where we hit a bottleneck. This in this very step. Now, what is happening is earlier this logarithm served two useful purposes. One, it converted products to sums. The second thing is that it simplified our density really well, right. So, if there was a Gaussian, then it had a e power something, you did a log and the logs and the e's cancelled. But now, what is happening is there is a log in inside, uh, there is a sum inside the log, right. So, this is a sum. Uh, and 
we don't know of nice ways to handle sums inside logs usually. We will somehow get to handling it in a minute, but uh, it is not immediately obvious how to you know handle sums inside logs. Um, if it was a product inside logs, we know log will factor that into sums, but then we have a sum inside logs, which is which is where the problem comes from. Nevertheless, we will write this down, right, pi square root of 2 pi sigma k. Okay, so this is the complicated log likelihood expression. Um, it's a it's a function of uh, now we are going to treat this as a function of mu mu k sigma k pi k, and then try to maximize this. Um, well, what we can try is go our usual route and say that well I'll try to take the derivative of this with respect to each of the parameters of interest, and then try to set it to zero and see what happens. Uh, there are multiple problems with that, right? So um, the first problem is. Um, and you can try doing this, but then it is not possible uh, to solve this analytically. When I say analytically, there is no equation that we will end up with like mu hat ml earlier was just the average of the data points, right? So, that was a nice equation for mu hat ml. It is not possible to solve this analytically, right? So, if you take the derivative with respect to mu and try to set it to 0, there is no closed form solution for uh, for the mu's. Uh, if you take the derivative with respect to pi, that is a bigger problem because uh, pi's not just are not free variables, right. So, they are constrained by the fact that all the pi's should uh, sum to 1. So, it is not a unconstrained optimization problem, it is a constrained optimization problem that is an even uh, bigger problem, right. So, we have to take care of all that um, if you are taking the derivatives and trying to set it to 0. And in general, it is not possible to solve this analytically. Uh, of course, uh, for people who have seen some kind of optimization methods before, um, there are some gradient based approaches that you can use to, uh, you know, write down the gradient and then do a gradient ascent because this is a maximization problem and then try to solve this. Um, th so, that is like a common general purpose method which works for any function and then we are trying to apply it to this particular. Uh, log likelihood function which we want to maximize with respect to some parameters. That is one way you can do it. Nobody is stopping us from doing that. You will get some estimates uh, mu hats, sigma squares and pi's. Um, instead, what we want to do is um, we somehow want to use the power of the structure that is there in this problem. The structure that is there in this problem is that there are well defined two steps that generate the data. That is the structure, right? So, first you have a cluster indicator and then you generate the data according to this. Um, but if you are using a general purpose optimization method, it does not necessarily exploit the structure very well. So, the question is can we come up with an alternate way to solve this which exploits the structure in a better way, right? So, what we want is we need an alternate way uh, to solve this. Efficiently, right? So, what do we want to solve? We, of course, want to solve the maximization of log likelihood with respect to the parameters, all the three k parameters that we wrote down earlier. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is do take a very quick detour now, and then we'll discuss a few ingredients which will be helpful for us to solve this optimization problem. Uh, once we see the ingredients, then we will try to see how we can apply to, to this particular likelihood function. Um, so, let me call this likelihood function star. We will come back and revisit star in a while, uh, but what we are going to do now is take a quick detour and talk a bit about convex functions and we will see how that will be helpful in solving this problem once we make that, uh, once we go over that discussion.